Welcome back. We are continuing with the new features in iTrain 5.1 and we now move on to the route related features. And we start with an improvement in the way that iTrain handles station platforms that span more than one block. This feature is described as improved support for shuttle trains that occupy two blocks in a station. Now, despite the description, this new feature applies to all train types, not just shuttle trains. When a block is specified as a station type, as it has been here, a platform section appears at the bottom of the window in both of the direction tabs. And it is here where we define the parameters for the platform. Refer to tutorial number 35 in the Using iTrain tutorial series for more detailed information about platforms and how to define them. But in brief, the platform is defined by giving it a start position within the block, an overall length, a center position, which by default is exactly central to the platform, or if the center around box is ticked, you can offset the center. Positive values entered here are relative to the start of the block and negative values relative to the end of the block. And we can also specify a side which the platform is located at. When a train is expected to wait at a station platform, by default it will come to a halt aligned along the platform rather than at the stop point defined for the block. In direction next for this particular block, the stop point is five centimeters from the end of the block in either direction. So if traveling in this direction, if it was stopping at the stop point for the block, it would stop somewhere around here. If traveling in direction previous, it would stop somewhere around here but by default, it will stop aligned to the platform. And the reason it aligns to the platform is because in the train types editor, by default, this parameter here called align train along the platform is ticked. So whenever a weight is specified for the station with a platform, by default, it will come to a halt aligned to that platform. So that works very well when the platform is completely contained within one block, which it is in this case. But if the station platform spans two blocks, as we've shown here, perhaps because there is a turnout located somewhere alongside the platform, things are a little more challenging because the start of the platform, which in this case is defined in this block, is actually prior to the block in which it's been defined. So if we're traveling in this direction, the start of the platform is prior 
to the block in which the platform has been defined. So to adjust for that, in iTrain 5.0, we were able to enter a negative value which offset the start of the platform. So in this case, by 30 centimeters. So we're traveling in direction next. This is the normal start of the block and we have offset it by 30 centimeters. So the start of the platform will be somewhere around here. That then allowed the train to halt centrally to the whole of the platform, which again worked well, except if the train was longer than the block in which the platform was defined. If the train was longer than the block, I train would halt the train at the block's stop position and not centrally to the platform. So in 5.1 this has been improved. Negative values are still used to offset the start of the platform to a position prior to the block, but even if the train is longer than the block, it will come to a halt aligned along the platform when the align train along platform parameter is set in the train types editor. So that is all for this tutorial. In the next episode, we look at the new permissions tab that is within a station properties, which can be used to determine how other stations should be considered after waiting at the current station when using automatic routing without a route. So until then, bye for now.